And that's the problem. But if we try to stick with a whole plant food, so whole food plant based, and stay there, that's the way to go. Uh, that's uh, been uh, uh, documented in the whole the book whole, uh, which is a New York Times bestseller. Uh, and then it stands in contrast. This idea of nutrition working that way stands in contrast with what I call medicine, or better yet, reduction medicine, where we talk about one disease at a time as if it's an entity unto itself and shares no no uh, relationship to any other disease, which is incorrect. But one disease, one cause of that disease, one mechanism to treat that disease. That's what medicine is. Uh, so that leads to the concept of targeted drugs that have side effects, as I've already mentioned. Uh, this is why holist nutrition, or just nutrition, but nutrition is really holist. This is why not taught in medical schools. Uh, I've lectured in all but six, I've lectured in medical schools in all but six states in this country. And I know pretty well uh, the way they think, or and not in the medical school, medical schools or their conferences. I know very well what drives our medical system. It's all about focus, focus, focus on one disease, one entity, one treatment, one this, one that. And it's not doing us really any good, in my view. Maybe some places somewhere along the line, but not in the, in the whole. If nutrition is taught, less need for drugs. This is why the public is so confused about nutrition. They'll never learn. First, nutrition is just talked about in terms of individual nutrients, as they say, uh, how much is in food or how much you should put here and there, how much you should consume, uh, you know, all those details. And, and it's changing, it's changing over time. Uh, and, uh, uh, and those numbers are changing. How in the world can anyone really remember that? When in fact, a very simple solution would just be eat plants and try to eat them in whole food form. But the medical system is not going to allow this because the medical system is designed to, to sell things and make money, not make nutrition. One more comment here. Uh, this is a, a list of uh, diseases I put together uh, a few years ago on uh, the relate the uh, to make a point that the whole food my right, base diet can prevent suspend and or cure all these diseases. This is just a collection I got out of the literature. It's a good good list there. It's very broad. It happens happens rapidly, uh, and there's basically no side effects. What about viral diseases? I didn't have that access, that access to that information at the time, but subsequently did. In fact, in our, we did a study in China, many of you may know about a very large study, um, <clears throat> that uh, we looked at a lot of fact, effects of water and nutrients and, and uh, other characteristics concerning health on the production of about four dozen different diseases. One of them was, uh, was a viral disease, or actually four were viral diseases. But th and this, is, this is the one here that kills about 800,000 people a year worldwide. It's the fifth leading cause of death in the world. We don't hear much about it, almost nothing, uh, in the context of the coronavirus thing. But in any case, you know, just show you a little scheme. We, I went back when, I, when the pandemic broke, I went back to uh, the data we had uh, at that time, it was 2020. Uh, and this was a combination study between mainland China and Taiwan. Uh, and had the data and we told about almost 9,000 people in that. We, we measured what they ate, we took blood samples, and we knew what they died of, and so forth and so on. Uh, and this is just a sort of a, a brief schematic of, of the point I want to make. Namely, we, we have a virus out here. This is a, this is a hepatitis B virus called surface antigen. It's a live virus, if you will. It's out here in the community, if you will, and, and it lands on us. And, Everybody can get infected with it. That's not the issue. Uh, and it can stay in our bodies and be asymptomatic, if you will, or it can do its dirty work, form liver cancer. Uh, if it, if otherwise, when it lands, if we are in the right condition, we can form antibodies and T cells, by the way. Uh, and we, we can do this kind of thing here. This, so what we learned from that exercise, we had lots of nutrient characters. We measured all over, all over China. Well, 170 villages, to be honest about it. So uh, this is pub pub publication information. So what did we learn? The virus comes in and infects us. And we, you know, let it, we let the active virus hang around. That's when, and another way of saying is that's when we test positive for the virus. It just stays there. 
that, that does one of two things. One, it causes just problems. In this case, liver cancer and death. It's a very high rate of death with this particular virus. And it turns out that the single factor, according to 11 different ways of measuring this kind of intake, all highly significant for the statisticians of a bunch of P001. Uh, so I just used those. And it turns out when in this population of uh, 8,900 and some people, uh, that they're consuming only a small amount of animal food are the ones who actually got the liver cancer. In other words, the, the, they did not, uh, they do not need to what what was needed. And that was consumed plant food. The ones consuming even tiny bit of animal food, they got the death. The ones consuming plant food, the virus was turned into being in, in an active, inactive state by formation of antibodies. And I should say, uh, that's, you know, enhancing natural killer cells, T cells, along the way. So, Animal food, surprisingly small amount, only 10% of what we do on average was in this. Plant foods, on the other hand, they all for, they did not get the liver cancer. Animal food people got liver cancer, plant food people did not. Really striking. And as I said, these are all highly significant with respect to correlations, conversion to the same outcome. And of course, that has not been very, very acceptable. I've published a lot of papers, there's you know, well over 300 and some papers in peer reviewed journals. I've served on the editorial boards and done all that sort of thing. I submitted this publication, for, I submitted this information at the beginning of the pandemic, suggesting that, gee, what works here on this virus here might also work for the coronavirus as well. Something happened the first time in my life. It happened twice. I've never seen this. I sent it into the two leading medical journals in this particular case. Both of them would not even review it. They would not even that for we, they, that never happens in this trade. I mean, people uh, publication can be turned out of has nothing to do with uh, what that published what that journal is publishing. But in this case, these are two journals, medical journals, very much into encouraging all the information they could give on the coronavirus. They turned it down primarily because the companies own these journals now. We, and this is where it really depresses me because science used to be a great discipline, how we learn things. Now it's coming under the control of industry, particularly the livestock industry and the uh, the drug industry, if you will, among others. Uh, and I say they don't want to hear the, this kind of thing. They don't want to hear that, for example, the virus might be controlled by it just eating the right food. And it can happen very quickly, by the way. Uh, and here's a quick summary of uh, what we do know about the individuals most susceptible to COVID-19. Uh, these are people over 60 years of age, and they're the ones that comprise most of the deaths, as you know. Uh, degenerative diseases, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, so forth and so on. That's where most of the people who supposedly died of coronavirus uh, were actually dying of these diseases, quite frankly. Uh, and there's, I'm showing this little scheme here. Had these people, right here, uh, been used the right nutrition, they wouldn't be having these diseases and therefore be susceptible to the COVID, COVID disease, especially the severity of them, uh, obviously causing death. In contrast, those who, would, if they were to consume the whole food plant-based diet, they wouldn't have these comorbid conditions, not, not maybe one-tenth at, at the most. Uh, and then at the same time, they, they wouldn't, if they ate this kind of diet, they wouldn't have this. And then in turn, what we learned from the uh, hepatitis B virus, if that applies, I'm convinced it does, uh, we wouldn't have the effect on the disease itself. So I'm going to finish here, just to list for you quickly uh, a resource that we have that's been quite exciting is at, at the Cornell University. Uh, it's an online course. It's been done really well. I'm very proud of it. We've had it now for about 15 years. It's science-based and uh, doctors can get continuing education credits and we have a variety of faculty involved in this. That was uh, most recently updated in the publication in 2020. I, I published this book with my grandson, actually. He was a great writer. And, uh, and uh, so that came out in this book here. I'm basically discussing um, some of the things that we have basically adopted as truths, in fact, are not. 
<clears throat> if you look at history, you can see where they came from, and you can see why these untruths were developed and why they were developed. So thank you very much, and I'm glad to take questions. Mm -hmm.